Hey, welcome to part two of our friends list application. You can see I have the final product on the screen and this is where we're going to finish. I have a list of friends. I'm going to sort them. I can sort them by ascending order and descending order. So that's coming right up. In the previous version of the application, we only had the first two uh, controls working. So we've got some extra buttons to do. So let's go back to where I was at the end of the previous video. Okay, so you can see I am now back to where I was at the previous video. Let's first of all add a button that will put five friends on the screen. That's going to just help us do a lot of work without so many uh, data entry things. So let's put a button on the screen and we'll change his text to add five friends. And then in my convention, I'm going to change his button name. So it just seems to help me in my programming if I use btn as a prefix, underscore, and then a description of the button. So this is add five. Now let's go ahead and put some code inside. So I'm going to double click on this and the event called button five, add five will click, uh, shows up. And let's go ahead and add some people. So in this button, we're just simply going to add some people to the list. So my friends add is the command we're looking for. And then go ahead and make up five names. Uh, just pick people you know, and their string will be added to the list. Now I'm going to run the program. It's not going to quite work, and I'm going to let you to try to figure out why it doesn't. But let's see how it works now. Okay, so I've got the app running, and just like before, we can add one guy, choose add, and it says there are one people in the list. Now I choose add five, now it did add these five, but nothing on the screen changed. Can you figure out why? Well, if you can't, let's go ahead and continue to work here and I'll show you why. So we need to update the list here, not just add the people to the list. Now the missing line that we're trying to add is called the binding source. So BS dot reset bindings is the key word to update the list. So it triggers a refresh. And then I'd also like to add the label. So it'll tell me how many people I've added in the label. So it should just be a copy and paste from the previous example. Okay, let's see if that makes a difference. Let's run the app again. Okay, let's move over and let's add somebody. So I'll put in somebody's name and then it says there's one person. Now I'm gonna add five. And look at there, it says six over here and we've got six people in the list. If I choose add five several times, you can see that now the list has at least 21 people in it. So it looks like I've got ourselves uh, an, a list that has the ability to add multiple people at one time. Next, we need to add the sorting. So let's go fix that now. So if I need to sort, I need a button to actually do the sorting for me. So let's put in two buttons here for sorting. So we'll drag two buttons into the place and I'm going to name these buttons as uh, BTN sort ascending and I'm going to give it a uh, text value of A arrow Z. So that's kind of like forward sort. And then for the reverse, I'm going to have a Z to A and I'll call this thing button or BTN underscore um, sort descending. So we've got ourselves two buttons. Now let's go ahead and add some code. So let's start with the first guy and double click him. And now you can see I've got a new method that I can program. So this is pretty simple. All I have to do is take my list, my friends, and there is a nice uh, function built in called sort. Isn't that simple? And then lastly, we need to update the binding source. So I'm gonna do the same thing called reset bindings and put in a false there. That should be a resorting. Let's go ahead and try it. All right, so let's go ahead and try somebody out. Let's put in a, a new person. I'm gonna put in the word Monty for his name and it says there's one person. I'm gonna add five more. Now we've got something to sort. So let's go ahead and click the A to Z button. And sure enough, Hannah is first and Vicky appears to be last. Let's go into the reverse sort by looking at the design, double clicking on the reverse sort button and let's take these two pieces of code from the previous button and paste them. Now there's just one thing that's missing. We need to do a reverse. So let's put in my friends dot reverse and our sorting routine now should be in reverse order. So what I'm showing you here is some list operations. 
So myfriends.sort and myfriends.reverse has nothing to do with the list box. It's simply a list in memory of the computer. However, the binding is the proper way to make this work. Also, I think I missed something here is uh, if I click this uh, add five, there's an error that doesn't uh, seem to work like I want it to. What I did earlier was set the data source up here and I did not do that on the next line. So let's just add the list box data source in and I think that'll work fine. Okay, we're gonna run it again. Okay, I've got my app up and running. Let's try add five friends. There they are. We'll sort them. Now Hannah's first, Vicky's last. Let's choose Z to A and it reverse order. So we can sort them in any order we want. Lastly, you may have noticed I had a clear button down here in the corner. So that'll finish up the app. Let's put in a clear button. So let's take in our button and drag it over to the place we think is a good spot for it. And let's put some text on it. Looks like I need some more space here. So the clear button, let's change his text to the word clear. Okay, so I'm gonna add the word clear to the text property. And then I'm going to name the button as btn underscore clear. Let's go ahead and add some programming now. So I'll double click on clear and I've got this little area to code in. So this clear button is pretty simple. There is a way of clearing things out. So for instance, for the list box, we're going to say listboxitems.clear. For the my friends list, we'll destroy the list. That is also clear. And then for the text input, the new friend text input can be cleared. And then the label one dot text Clear doesn't seem to work here. <laughs> okay, so Microsoft wasn't consistent in everything, but it's not hard. You just say text equals, and then you can have it to be an empty string. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, I've got my app up and running. I'm gonna add some people. I'll add a bunch of friends, and I should be able to clear them. Okay, looks like I have an error. You can see that the computer crashed. Now it says in my uh, programming that uh, there was a problem. It says here that the uh, list box items is read only. Okay, so you're not allowed to actually clear these items, but no problem. What we can clear is the list of my friends. So I'll just take this error out. And then after I've cleared everything, I'm going to do another binding source. And let's see, we'll do reset bindings and false. So if the list of my friends is cleared, then the list itself, the list box, should be cleared as well. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and add some people. Choose clear, and that seems to work much better. So let's try adding somebody here. Let's put in Bob as a single user up here, and then choose clear, and you can see that they're all gone. So it appears that our app is finished. So what you've seen is a demonstration of a list box. List boxes are able to associate themselves with an actual list. We have some buttons over here to add things and to sort them. So this sets you up for many different programming techniques in a Windows application. Lists are everywhere. And so we're going to actually use some lists now using uh, for loops and while loops in the next couple of tutorials. So thanks for watching and stick around for some more computer science with C Sharp.